Good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for attending this talk. Um, the core of this is around an issue that uh, I ran into at work where we were developing with Python in a predominantly Windows environment, and uh, a use case where we we uh, found a, a solution to a problem with Iron Python. So my name is Matt McGraw. I work at FAF Automotive, where I'm the team lead of business intelligence and development. And we are a predominantly .NET shop, so our web applications in ASP.NET, and our data warehouse is mostly written in SQL and SQL Server. For a quick overview for, uh, of a data warehouse topology, for those that are unfamiliar, on the left side of the screen, you'll see that we have traditional business uh, operation systems. So this can be finance and accounting, your web analytics, um, sales and operations systems that all your business users are interacting with uh, throughout their daily operations. And the point of data warehousing is to bring all of that information into a centralized database, um, per, you know, process that data, and then be able to report on that to show how, how your, your business is, is tracking against their targets, but also to be able to forecast what direction you guys are going and spot any issues that you have early. So uh, the ETL process stands for extract, transform, and load, and that's usually pulling data out of those source systems, doing any transformation that you have to, and then, and then loading it into your, your data warehouse. And then the processing is uh, mostly SQL scripts that prepare the reports or forecasts that you want to use. Um, we ran into uh, several use cases where we wanted to use Python more within both our ETL and our, our processing and forecasting. So what we what we had started to do is uh, install Anaconda around or on, on our servers and our, our local desktops and start using Python within this our workflows. The use cases for Python within a data warehousing environment are typically when you want to get more um, forecasting and predictive modeling and other analytical questions out of your data. So you really want to know where you're going and understand why things happened the way they did. The other, the other big use case for us was we have a lot of fairly difficult parsing and, and data cleansing jobs where sort of stock SQL didn't work. A really great use case of this is regular expression. So if you're trying to parse a lot of really uh, difficult regexes out of text data, it's hard to do this in SQL. Um, but we also started introducing more web scraping, more JSON parsing, um, and other text uh, analysis into the load process. So that's where Python became uh, a really uh, a, you know, a good tool within our toolkit. So what we really wanted to do in order to sync up our Python scripts with our, our data warehouse was install PyODBC and, and get to work. So PyODBC is one of the uh, ODBC connections that or, or libraries, excuse me, that you can use uh, to be able to connect to mostly any database from a Python script. So this is what a clean install of PyODBC looks like in Ubuntu. You pip install PyODBC, everything works as you expect, and, and away you go. Unfortunately, as I alluded to at the start of the, the talk in Windows, that doesn't always go according to plan. So we were hit with uh, an error where we weren't able to find vcvarzal.bat. And one of the ways to, to fix this or to correct this issue is you go back and you install a different Python um, with, that's built for, um, built for Microsoft specifically. And unfortunately, that solution just wasn't going to work for us because we had a lot of our tools already written using the Anaconda distribution. So we turned uh, to Iron Python, and we wanted to explore whether Iron Python could work for us. I didn't know a lot about Iron Python, but I know I'd heard about it uh, on the, the Talk Python podcast. I had heard about this implementation of Python that was written in .NET. And while I can't give adequate coverage to everything about Iron Python, the, the key thing that Iron Python gives you is it gives you native access to the CLR. And what the CLR is, is the .NET common language runtime. And that gives you native access to the entire Windows API. So from that library alone, you can access mostly everything else you can within the traditional .NET ecosystem that's available to C-sharp and, uh, and F-sharp and, and VBA. So we wanted to see if we could write a Python script in Iron Python that would handle our communication to the to SQL Server for us. And the design of that library was something we called Iron Query. And Iron Query is a single class library. And it has a pretty simple uh, initialization signature where it it looks similar to most ODBC libraries, 
where you're taking in a server a database, the query you want to execute, what the output file name should be, and we'll come back to why that's important in a couple of slides, and then two simple methods, executing the query and executing a write. And both of those uh, handle the connectivity um, uh, error handling, and this script is called uh, using command line arguments. The reason why we're communicating over command line arguments is because we have a separate library that's written in traditional C Python 3.5 that initializes mostly the same signature. But in order for it to actually execute that query in Iron Python, we use subprocess and then kick off that query um, by executing uh, subprocess.run. And the, return, the returned object is given back to the query executor file. So we can use that, uh, the query executor class, excuse me, in our regular Python workflow. So how this actually looks in practice is you import pandas as PD, which is a common way to bring pandas into, uh, into your library, and you import query executor from query executor. From there, you can initialize a standard query here shown as select column from table. Uh, you initialize my query with that query, and in this case, I have specified that I want a return object to be a file, and the file is passed into results through myquery.run, and then results can be loaded into pandas read CSV, and then I'm now operating with a normal pandas data frame in a few lines of code. Um, the the benefits of this of this sort of small library that we we had were that it it is basically giving us native performance. So compared to executing the query directly in either Visual Studio or SQL Server Management Studio, we're getting comparable performance to that. So we can load over a million records in the exact same time it would take to to load that, and that includes going across the file system and then loading it back through the query executor class. Um, we're able to load both files or a list of dictionaries. So when we're loaded list of dictionaries, it behaves like a normal, a normal query would where each uh, dictionary, the key is the column heading and the, the value is the content of the row. And we're able to read and write back to SQL Server uh, with, with, again, native performance and just a second instance of query executor. So this has been tremendously helpful in a lot of our our, uh, ca our, our cases where we've been able to swap out uh, a rather complicated ETL process with a pretty straightforward Python script that's pretty easy to follow, um, mostly because of a simple library written in Iron Python. That is all. Thank you very much.